What's going on, everybody? It's Carmine from Bar Mine Tech, and today we're going to be talking about the Proxmox helper strips. So this is something that I've seen a lot of new videos about, everybody's talking about. I figured I'd give it a shot on my own, and these are awesome. The, the automation that you can do from these scripts and setting everything up, whether it's a new Proxmox server, an existing Proxmox server, are great. So let's get right into it. So just go over what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be working with the Proxmox V helper strips. This is a project that somebody, let's see, we have it on GitHub over here. It's T-Tech, and they've made out all these scripts to two different functions on Proxmox, and we're going to get into that, whether it's actual settings for the Proxmox V host, or containers or VMs coming off of it. The other thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be working with the Barmine Tech server. If you're not familiar, this is a mini PC that I made into a Proxmox server that we started this channel on probably about I would say 85 to 90 percent of the projects we do are off of this mini PC that runs Proxmox VE. It's been through two versions of Proxmox. As you can see it's up here it's on 8.22 and it's going to come into play in a couple of minutes when we go back to the helper scripts. But right now it's pretty clean I don't really have much running on it because I cleared out a lot of the stuff as I finished up my semester. Uh, I was using this to do some schoolwork as well but this is you know it's been updated and it has 8.22 on it, but now that's enough of the machine we're working with, let's go back to the scripts. So first thing is, if you notice up here, there was a little warning down here, but it says start in July 2024, the scripts in the repository will, will require Proxmox virtual environment 8.1 or later. So that means that they're not gonna support anything earlier than 8.1. And pretty much that's the latest versions of Proxmox. So, wow, I can't tell you. Proxmox, there we go, we'll give it another try. Uh, if we come over to virtual environment, we can see if we go to, where is it gonna be? Let's, I guess we'll just go to downloads. The latest version is 8.2, so if you are working with an older Proxmox server, you're gonna wanna update that. I do have a video of how to update from seven to eight, but now there's been a new package again, so I haven't done any updates with that, um, but we are on 8.2, so just make sure your system's up to date so you can keep using these scripts. If we go back to the helper scripts, the URL is just helpertackscripts.com. You could just Google Proxmox helper scripts and it'll, the first hit should be the site. I wish that this bar would kind of, oh, there we go. Now we can get it out of the way. So pretty much when we get to the site, it's very simple and we're going to get straight into it and we're going to click browse scripts and that's going to take us to all the scripts. So in here, it has all the different scripts broken up by category. So if you want to do Proxmox VE tools, they're in here. If you want to work with operating systems, they're over here. Now, when you get over into the stuff outside of like the actual VE tools and probably nope, automation still has them too. Uh, when we get over to like, let's say operating systems, you can see some of these say LXC and some of them say VM. So this is going to differentiate on whether the script's going to make a container in Proxmox or it's going to make a virtual machine. So like this Ubuntu 2404 is going to make a virtual machine for me where this Ubuntu entry is going to make me an LXC container. So just keep that in mind when you're looking through. Some of these are different. So like automation has some of them where, oh, sorry, home assistant. So some of these home assistant ones are VMs and containers. So just keep that in mind if you're going to be using it just so you don't make a VM or container vice versa by mistake. But the first ones I want to look at are the VE tools. So I want to do kernel clean. I do want to use kernel clean because like I said, this Proxmox instant has been running for a while. So there definitely should be some old kernels going back. So we're going to just click on the node. We're going to click on shell. It's going to bring me into there and it's going to be you name tech R. And we can come over here and we can see the kernel. So that's my current kernel version. And there should be other ones in there. So now that we have our, we see the kernel version, I'm going to come over here and grab the helper script and we're going to run it. So first thing before you're on any script you find on the internet, you do want to double check. And I do have the view, the view source over here. So you could read through and Proxmox is based off of Debian. And that's why they can make these scripts so simply to work around and do everything. So you probably just want to take a look and double check, you know, if you're familiar with the scripting and see what it's doing. So you can read through it. We're not going to, and I'm going to run it. I know that I've had multiple people I know run this and there's other people that are doing it. So I know it's pretty reputable. You just click on it over here to grab it. We're going to go back to the server. I'm going to paste and we're going to hit enter. And then it's going to bring up menus. 
So it's going to say we can clean our own risk, and this is something that you definitely want to be careful with. If you are running something that you need to stay up, you probably want to be very cautious about running this and make sure you have backups or you're not wiping the most recent kernel. But this is a non-priority machine. If I break it, it's not the end of the world. I'm going to click yes. And you can actually see all the kernels that are available on this machine. So if you remember, the most recent one was, I think, 6.3. So I'm just going to get rid of all of these. I believe that it doesn't show the current version on there, so you can't remove your current one. But it's going to show all the other ones, so I'm going to click OK. And we're going to clean these up. And we're going to let this work, and we'll be right back. While this works, let's go back and look at the scripts. Actually, you can see over here, it's removing the kernels, and it's updating Grub. And we're all set. So this is actually all set. I'm going to close out this GitHub, and let's take a look at the next one we want, want to do. So it can do like the post install. So if you have a fresh install of, of Proxmox, you can actually go through and it's going to change the repository. So it's going to disable the enterprise repo, enable a no subscription, add in the Ceph packages, removing the add or it's going to add or you could disable the test or the beta repos. I don't typically do the test repo because I don't want to get a bad update that might brick my system. And it can also get rid of the subscription nag box and update the VM. So, you know what? I haven't updated the machine in a while, so I'm going to do this. So we're going to copy this one. And we're going to paste that in there. We're going to run this. And it's going to be the same thing. It's going to ask us if I want to run it. We're going to click yes. And then it's going to go through some more menus. So it's going to create sources and update install. So we're going to click yes. I do want to disable it. I do want to enable the no subscription. I don't need Ceph, so I'm going to click no. Could always enable this later. I don't want the PVE test repository. I do want the subscription box gone. And then it's just saying if you want to donate to uh, Proxmox. If you plan to do a cluster, you can disable the HA. I'm not going to be using high availability, so I'm going to disable it. You could always enable it later. And the script's going to just keep working. And here we go. Now we're going to update. I'm going to click yes. I mean, the script is super helpful because it is doing everything in the background. So just think when you do a fresh Proxmox install, this pro process probably takes about 20 minutes. And we're just going to update the node real quick. Uh, reboot the node, sorry. After I do a, fro a fresh Proxmox install, I mean, this whole process probably takes me like 20 minutes between getting the repo sorted out, trying to get rid of the nag box, get everything updated. I mean, it takes some time. So to have this script that, I mean, we just did it in a few minutes is super helpful. And we'll just give this a minute to come back up and then we'll be right back. There we go. And now the machine is all back and we can see it's booting up. So if I come over to repos, we can see that no subscriptions enabled. The enterprise one is disabled. Uh, you see no subscription is enabled. So cool. So we don't have to worry about that. Um, Ceph isn't in place. So you see it's not installed. So that's cool. And I'm trying to just see what else. We can't really see the nag box. I'll, I'll log out and we'll see if it comes back up. So we'll do my root. Type in password. Unfortunately, that still worked, but I think sometimes it caches it. So I'm not really going to knock that at the moment. The nag box is one of those things that's annoying to get rid of. But that's another one of those scripts that you can run. And it's going to get everything set up for post Proxmox install. So now that we finished up really the most of the V tools I think I'm interested in, I mean, there's other stuff in there and you could definitely take a look, but I'm not going to really mess with those. Let's move on to some of the other ones. So we do have a, a bunch of different ones. So we have the ad blockers, which I do like working with, and I do like running them out of LXC containers. So we do have one for Pi-hole. There's AdGuard Home. I, I already run these at the moment, so I'm not going to run another one, but definitely going to be something to look forward into the future. We do have stuff for networking, so if you are interested, maybe you run WR, open R, WRT, or you know you need Nginx Proxy Manager, WireGuard, any of these stuff. There's HeadScale, Flare Resolver, Cloudflare, you know, Caddy. There, there's a bunch of different ones in here. You could just grab one of these LXC containers. There's traffic, and there's also a couple ones for VMs, so that's for like routers that you could do over there. I'm gonna look for one of the containers that we can run, and want to show you how that script works. So I was just taking a quick look at some of the different categories and under monitor and there's a LXC container for Notifier. So it seems like it's very similar to Uptime Kuma, which we've talked about in the past and it does some of the same features. So I'm going to give this one a try, but we're going to grab the bash script 
and I'm going to come back over to my PvE host. We're going to go to Shell. I'm going to paste that in. And now this is going to make a LXE container. So if you are interested, I believe it should say what it's going to give. It's going to give one CPU core, 512 megabytes of RAM, and two gigs of storage, which is fine. So we're going to hit enter. Stuff like this can always be changed in the future. Uh, we can click yes to I want to do it. And it's going to go through, and it's going to ask you if I want to use the default settings. If you want to change anything, you can, but I'm going to use default. I've actually never heard of this program before. This is the first time seeing it, so I'm intrigued what it's going to be like. But you can see over here now it's building out the LXC template, creating the container. And if we look up here in the left corner, it actually just built out the container. So pretty cool. It's all the way up there. It named it for us, and it looks like it put a little icon in there too. Unfortunately, there we go. And DHCP worked. It resolved the DNS. So, I mean, everything looks like it's working really good. We're going to get this in a minute and we'll be right back. And now it says it's all done. It did all the work for us and configured it up. And it tells me that it'll be accessible at the following URL. So, I'm just going to copy that. And we're going to open a new tab. And it says it's working. So, I think something's probably missing. So, I'm going to figure this out. Okay, I did a little troubleshooting looking through the guide, and I, I'm not too sure what's going on, so we're just going to try something else. Um, this might be something we'll look into another time in the future, but we're looking at another LXC container that we can do with these helper scripts. So I think we're actually going to look at the AdGuard Home, because this is a project we've talked about in the past, and to deploy it as an LXC container would be pretty nice, and this one should work, unlike uh, the Notifier, unfortunately. I'm going to copy the script. We're going to come back over to my... Machine. I'm just going to shut down this old container for Notifier that isn't working. We're going to come over to the PV, go back to the shell. I'm just going to paste in this script again. And we're going to run it. So, yep, I want to create an AdGuard LXC. I do want to use the default settings, so we'll just click yes. And looking over here, it looks like it's going to give it 2 gigs of RAM, 1 core, and half a gig of RAM. Uh, 2 gigs of memory, uh, storage, sorry. 2 gigs of storage, 1 core, and half a gig of RAM. We're going to let it build out this container, and then we'll be right back. Okay, so the container finished deploying. And once again, it gives me where I could access it. So hopefully this one works. And look at that, it does. So I'm not going to go through the setup process for AdGuard Home. But we can see that in less than a minute or so, we're able to fully deploy a container. And get everything installed, the packages needed, and all that good stuff. So definitely helps automate the process of getting your new container set up and much quicker. There's plenty more projects and different templates on that site for the PV helper scripts that you could look at. And I only coupled, covered a couple of them, so you could definitely spend some time checking them out. I'm definitely going to be taking a better look at it because the scripts can do so much for you throughout Proxmox and all the deployments you might want to do and just automating the process. I mean, to go through just setting up for like a Plex server that they have the stuff for can take quite some time. I mean, you could probably sit there for over an hour trying to do stuff. And I bet with those scripts, you could probably knock everything out in 30 minutes or less. So it really is going to make a difference. So definitely a cool project. Uh, if you are interested, you go over. They have a support page. So you can you know, donate or whatever you might want to do. But that's about it for this video. I think this will be definitely helpful if you're you know, looking to run Proxmox in the future. Or you already do and you're just looking for something to add on to it. Uh, I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. If you did, if you could like, comment, subscribe. It helps the videos and helps the channel grow. And if you're interested, I have all the gear I use in my home lab in Amazon links below in the description if you want to check any of that out. And I will also have a link to my Discord server. If you want to join up, we could chat about projects or if you guys run into issues or anything, we could help each other out. Other than that, I want to thank everybody for watching and I will see you in the next video.